um, 2067, what will Holy Cross be like? Um, oh, wow. Uh, 2067. I was thinking 2027, 2067, that's 50 years from now. Michael, help me out. <laughs> Where do you see us 50 years from now? Hmm, that's a good one. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good question. So I guess I'll be almost 70. <laughs> and I will be 95 years old. I'd be 105. <laughs> Maybe I'll be alive. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I <laughs> that's a really good question. Like you know that it's I like know that 2067 is going to be different than now, but like what specifically is going to be different? So I think that's a really interesting thing to think about. Uh, it's fun to fun to speculate about the, about the future, but if you look at the history of speculating about the future, it's a pretty <laughs> it's a pretty low batting average. I'm expecting flying cars, man. <laughs> I was expecting by 2017, but I feel like by 2067 we'll, we'll have the flying cars, you know? The technical things might change, you know, how you access, type on your cell phone, how you access your electronics, what you have on your glasses that maybe helps you see something different in the world. That can all change, but the basic human understanding of one another won't. How do we continue to be relevant in a rapidly changing world? I'd love to see um, faculty and students live in, um, in close proximity to each other. I worry that, uh, that we, we, may, we may reach a point where the face-to-face -face conversation similar to what we're having becomes uh, the exception and not the rule. Things like climate change, things like how we're going to feed uh, an exploding population, how we're going to manage uh, with limited resources. We've come a long way with like um, like integrating women to the college and people of like different races, um, but I think there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, you see the past start to repeat itself in ways that you didn't think you would have to relive again, so um, which I think a liberal arts education understands the value of both history as well as future. Um, liberal arts education gives us the opportunity to explore, which is important as a college student. You don't want to be stuck into just one like one area that you decide at 18 years old. Like that's like it's not very realistic. As we specialize as a society, as we specialize more and more, uh, a liberal arts education in its truest sense, which I believe is still still exists at Holy Cross, uh, becomes a tremendous differentiator. So I believe that liberal arts education is going to be perhaps even more important in the year 2067 than it is today. You know, the, the college as an institution will adapt to time and place, but never quite, never abandon its core values. Often the greatest strides that we make come out of evolution rather than revolution. And so taking something that is, you know, taking something like Jesuit education and continue, having it continue to evolve to meet the needs, uh, the ever-changing needs of our time, uh, I think is really at the core of what, uh, what will continue to propel Holy Cross. You know, three of my kids have come to Holy Cross. I hope they've drawn on the education that they have and uh, have look back on their lives and say, yeah, that was critical to who I became, was the education I had. So maybe that's where we are in 67, is, is looking back and hopefully with a sense of gratitude. Uh, and now the challenge is to really do everything we can to make it happen for the next 50 years and to make uh, it very real that a diverse group of students will be uh, privileged to have the same education and all the opportunities that come with it that we had and our students today have. Well, I'm uh, innately an optimist and certainly am an optimist about the future of Holy Cross.